Hello, everybody. My name is Tara Whitman, and I'm the curator director at Elton House, a historic house museum in London, Ontario. Every December, we launch a month-long exhibit called Victorian Christmas, which means the month of November is busy for our staff and volunteers to create the living greens that go up within the home. We make about 250 yards of garlands, often upwards of 30 wreaths, as well as multiple uh, greenery arrangements for on display on tabletops. Today we thought we would introduce you to the way we make wreaths because we know DIY Christmas, starting with Victorians to the modern day, is such a popular thing and also very, very satisfying and wonderful gift to give. So today, we're going to show you um, the way that we make our wreaths. Here we see just a simple cedar wreath on a wire frame with a classic red ribbon uh, at the very top hanging into that negative space in the middle. We have laid out on our table here a number of the materials that we need, including lots of cedar, yew uh, is another material we use, pine, cypress, uh, juniper, and so on. The aim really is to kind of create a maximum amount of texture on your wreath frame. We also have what we're going to build upon. These wreath frames are made out of wire. This is a 14 inch frame. Uh, you can buy these at craft stores. Uh, what they will provide for us is that armature that we're going to build up on top of. They are convex in shape, so that there's a little air space underneath between the back of the wreath and your door or window that you're going to hang it on, uh, as well as a place to put those little twigs that you're seeing we're going to need a place to tuck away. With the wreath frame, we also need a few more materials, including floral wire. Here we have a roll of 22 gauge floral wire, again available at local craft stores. They're painted green, so you won't be able to see the, the wire at all, except for at the back. Um, anywhere between 18 and 22 gauge uh, wire will work for, for these sorts of projects, wreaths and garlands. We also have a, a section of ribbon, which we'll be putting on the very last, as well as some clippers because it's amazing how much material is going to go into one wreath. You see, we've got a big pile here. This probably represents about two thirds of this frame. So make sure if you're collecting your own greens from your backyard or uh, a friendly neighbor's house, as long as you get permission, um, that you're getting lots of materials because you'll always need more than you need. All right, we're gonna start to build the wreath. The first thing that you have to decide is the design that you'd like to accomplish. There are a couple options. Some folks will like what would we call an all-round design, where you start at one place and you go in the same direction until you meet where you started. Um, usually this works better with things like spruce and stiffer greens. Um, another option, which is something that we use at the museum because we're holding these uh, events for a whole month, is a kind of cascade design where you've got a top which you've got your bow and everything is falling down gravity based to the bottom we do this because it seems to age a little bit better you don't notice when things dry out uh, and stiffen and sometimes uh, lose the greenery so we are going to do a cascade design today but the techniques are really the same the way we're going to start this wreath is we've got the frame we need um, to apply a hanger to it. And so just with a little bit of floral wire, I've looped around my fingers twice and then tied off just like a twist tie so that we have a place that will eventually uh, be able to uh, hang on a door or a window or a hook. And really, we're just going to apply that to the top of the wreath. And you'll see that the technique with this wire is you're just gonna be twisting. You're gonna be twisting and wrapping all the way around this wreath um, and it's quite versatile so just get in there make sure it's as firm as you like and now we have an orientation to the top because we're going to be um, doing a cascade design we're going to start at the bottom directly across from your hanger now i had mentioned to you we've got a whole bunch of different kinds of greens that we'll be using ideally what you're going to do either before you start wrapping 
or as you go um, up your wreath, you are going to cut likely about a six inch swath of your greens and it can be a little bit longer uh, as well if you need to. And usually as a rule of thumb, we would use likely three pieces of greenery applied to the wreath itself. So you see it's just going to cover that wire. Now we're going to start with our uh, floral wire in the same way as we have with that hanger. Just put it on, twist it around a couple times so that it's not going to slip. Wrap it around. My preference is always to keep the paddle of wire in the middle of the wreath because you're going to find that you're going to need to tighten that wire. So you take your wire, you throw it over the top of your greenery, usually about two thirds the length um, in from uh, the ends. As a rule of thumb, apply the wire three times, one, two, three, over the base. And here you can see where that wreath frame comes in handy. You can tuck in the stems underneath where they won't show. So this is the beginning of your wreath and what we're going to do is the same thing again and again until we reach our top. We're going to have three pieces of greens wired on, three pieces of greens covering that wire, and, and so on. Almost like fish scales where you've got the bottom covered, 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 so you're never seeing um, the wire. And so we'll just quickly do that again, kind of the maximum amount of uh, texture that you can achieve is the best and so as I say this is where your your material comes from you've got so much that's being applied and you're kind of squishing it down with that wire so that it looks a lot less and there you can start to see the effect uh, we like slightly different colors as well so you can see those textures afterwards if you find you have holes uh, or something that needs some repair. You just take a piece and you can kind of lift up your greenery and tuck that in um, to the wire itself. Uh, so don't feel like you need to stop and go back at any time. You can always repair something at the end of the process. So I'm just going to keep going um, with this greenery. We're going to go all the way up to the top, clip our wire, tie it off, and then come back down to the bottom and do the same thing. So I'm going to work away a little bit. I'll meet you back here when we're a little bit more completed. All right, we're in the home stretch now. We're just nearing the top on the second side. And you can see we've kind of met in the middle. These twigs, as you get closer to the top, um, are best trimmed a little bit because you want to have a nice portion here um, that looks finished. And so it takes a little bit of uh, finagling to do so. So I'm just going to keep applying. And you can see that it's gotten kind of bushy in some areas, which yours will too. Um, and that's all right because we're going to have a little finishing process where we go about um, trimming a bit. So, so I'm going to cut these little bits off. So we're pretty close to the top. You can see our hanger right here. I'm just going to apply a little bit more on either side. And then I'm going to take a couple of our nicer greens. You want to select some things that um, you like best or are almost featured uh, with berries or meat texture uh, for that tippy top. So, and then we're going to plan them so that they are falling in the opposite direction. So in other words, you can see here how we might kind of create that finished look and don't worry this part will be covered by that bow that will apply so we've got everything ready to go do a couple more 
our loops around. And then you can see here, take that wire and then go around the little loop that you put on first. And I just want to show you how the back looks. If our camera can pick this up, you can see that there are little twigs here and there that are poking through. This would be the time that we would trim them. And you can also see that spider web of the floral wire that has been created by wrapping and wrapping. So if we flip it over, one rule of thumb is if you want to, to take a look at how you've done and make sure that it has good balance, is to take an opportunity to, to hang it at this point. And you can see how uh, the gravity will fall. I can see we need to apply a little bit more uh, material in some of our bare spots. So now's the time to do that. And because of the type of wreath frame you have, you can just pull it through, kind of thicken it up. And you're pretty much done at this point. So here's the wreath as you can see it now. One last bit of the process. If you have a sealant of some kind, we use a product called Stay Fresh. Um, you can spray it on the greens. It just uh, keeps the moisture in for a little bit longer. If this is a wreath that's going to be outside in, in cooler weather, uh, please don't feel like you need to seal it in any way. It'll age naturally and then your different variety of greens will change color as well. A little bit more texture will come out. Um, very last thing you do, you spray it, let it dry, and then you affix your bow. You can make as fancy a bow as you like or you can do what we do in our museum, the plain Victorian uh, bow, just at the very junction of the top of your, your frame. We hope you've enjoyed this DIY um, uh, wreath making exercise. Please uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, come back and visit us again, and we might be adding some more greenery features on for you. Merry Christmas.